Okay, starting over here in the top left hand corner in this section, we have the delay speed. You've got a separate one for the left side and the right side. Let's see what they sound like. At the moment, they're synced by tempo, uh, but I could also put them on a free mode like this, where it'll go by milliseconds. Which is also quite fun to automate. You can also unlink them, and then that way you can have one side synced and one side not synced, or whatever you want. Great for playing around with. Um, let's look at some of the syncing options. I'll put them back together for a second. At the moment, they're running on dotted mode, but probably the most standard you're gonna use is notes mode. Um, that would set this at 1 8th note, 1 16th, 1 32nd, and so on. Now we could also set that at triplets. Great if you've got a triplet feel song that you're working on, makes things a lot easier. Uh, there's dotted mode as well, which is like one and a half of the note. Uh, very reggae and also nice to have because I don't know if that was in the other delays off the top of my head. And 16th mode, which is sort of like the electron devices where you can choose how many 16ths you want to have. Like three you could do easily, but something like say seven would start to get a lot harder. And if we try that, we could do three on one side and seven 16ths on the other side. We start getting some interesting rhythmic uh, patterns going on there. Okay, let's look at what else we've got here. I'll set these back to the same for now and we'll put them both on, say, dotted eights. And I'm gonna show you these two options down here. These offset the delay and you can push it either a little bit forwards in time or a little bit backwards in time. You see, as soon as I do that, we start to get a little bit of a stereo feel because of the variance. And they continue to shift by this amount as they continue echoing, which is cool. Now this can also be handy even if they're at the same offset, just to set your delay so that it's not quite perfect. Sometimes you'll find that if you're trying to get a delay to pop through in the mix, if it's perfectly in sync with things, it's hitting at the same time as many other things. And it's not, the transient's not gonna pop through, but if you set it just a little bit faster, or a little bit slower, you can make it come through a lot clearer in the mix. As a quick little mix down tip for you. Okay, we'll put them back to normal for now, or maybe just a little offset. And let's look at what we got below. This is the feedback knob that controls how many echoes we're having, down from just one echo up to lots, and kind of how, how many times it echoes and how long it continues to feed back. If we go past 100, it'll kind of go indefinite, it'll start to self oscillate. I could probably even stop the music here. And you hear it change, and you hear how it morphs and gets darker and more distorted. That's that kind of analog vibe you're looking for. Okay, over here we've got the input knob, which is gonna control the input volume. Normally that would be kind of boring, except this one is gonna push level into the analog tape. So it's gonna give you that emulation of that distortion. Let's see what it sounds like. It's gonna get a little louder, so we'll pull down the output. So we're getting a little bit of more nice character there again too, more analog vibes. Now if we wanted, we could hit this D button and then it will distort not only the wet signal but also the dry signal. This can be really nice on drums, vocals, lots of things really. If, if it sounds a little clean, definitely experiment with this. Okay, underneath that, I might set those back to normal. Underneath that we have the uh, phase flipping knob. It's probably most noticeable if I speed this up a lot. Okay, so here, that kind of metallic-y sound we're getting there. When I flip the phase, it's gonna flip the phase of the wet signal. Different tone now, right? So rather than all the audio adding up together and getting louder and summing, it's going to hit with the inverted phase one and cancel out. So we get a different tone and different impact when the dry hits at the same time as the wet. Also fun for automating, but you'll even notice that with a tempo sync delay. For those moments when the delays do hit at the same time, you'll uh, appreciate that, you know, the different options you've got there. 
Okay, let's come over to the middle panel. We've got a display here of what's happening with our delays. You can kind of see by, as I change the feedback, you can see how many echoes we're getting. As I change the um, speeds, you can see that represented there as well too. Underneath that, we got filters. We have a low pass and a high pass filter, both with resonance. And you can open this window here with this little tab and you can get a more graphical view of them. And this, this is nice because you can move them around two parameters at the same time here, like this. This really brings in that reggae kind of vibe as well too. As you start pushing the resonance and certain frequencies, you're gonna start to feel more of that distortion and more of that feedback. Let's try the low one, oh, high pass filter on the low frequencies. Loads of character in there. Let's put it back to about there for now. And let's take a look at the third section over here. So the first thing you're gonna see there, we got a reverb knob. Let's try putting a little bit of reverb on our, uh, it's gonna just go into the wet part of the delay. Now it's really starting to sound like a roll in space echo. Now with that reverb, we can control the decay, like how long it rings for. Really long, down to really short. We can control whether it's um, pre the delay or is it post the delay, like before it or after it. Uh, let's see what that sounds like. More subtle, but you definitely notice. Uh, and the feedback one is more extreme because it's gonna put the reverb inside the feedback loop. That one's really fun too. Just be careful with your speakers. Okay, over to the right, we've got a stereo width control, which is really handy. We can narrow in our stereo field all the way down to mono. And mono delays actually are really useful. Uh, we can also make it a little wider, separate it from, especially if your original sound was right in the middle. Maybe you want to separate them to the sides. Goes super wide, probably too wide. So be careful, if you go too far, things might start canceling out. Always double check it in mono. Below that, you got your output volume control, which comes in really handy because this distortion does get really loud. We have options over here for stereo, ping pong, and mid side. So to show you those, I might put these on exactly the same thing to start with. Let's bring this down here. So right now, let's go say, just some regular eighth note stereo ones, and we'll put them on ping pong so we can get left and right panning. If we go to mid side, it's actually gonna make, uh, I think the left side will be the mid channel and the right uh, side will be uh, the sides. And we're gonna alternate with them whatever speeds we've got set here. So we might wanna put them on different times here to demonstrate that. Next to that, we have the dry wet control. Classic dry wet control, blend in how much uh, delay you want. And remember, if you do your delay as a send and return to put it on 100% wet, otherwise you can just do your blending here. Okay, let's take a look at the second tab, the modulation tab. So, in here we've got an LFO that we can assign to different things, like the delay uh, speed. can also put some on the filter. Maybe we speed that up a little bit, we'll hear a bit more. Let's put some delay one on too. Right now I've got the four times button enabled to really exaggerate it, but you could turn that off and it'll be a little bit more subtle as well. Now you've got different shapes that you can use. Uh, like sine, triangle, up ramp, down ramp, square and random as well too. We can offset the phase of it between the left and right. And really start getting some crazy sound design stuff going on and complex rhythms. Now in the modulation section, it doesn't have to be just the LFO. We've also got an envelope 
And we just have a blend between that. So zero is gonna be all LFO. As we start to raise it, it's gonna introduce a bit of the envelope, which is gonna trigger each time. You can hear it when it hits with the stab. When we get to 100, it's gonna be all envelope. So you're blending between how much envelope and LFO is affecting these two things. Let's maybe put it on a more sensible setting. All right, let's take a look at the third tab, character. Now this one's super fun because we can control things like gates, ducking, and some analog tape emulation options here as well too. Let's start with the gate option. This is gonna let us have the delay only happen on loud notes essentially. So right now I've got a bit of stuff playing here with this tab with quiet notes and then a loud note. And you can see if I have the delay on all the time, it's just a little bit messy because there's so many notes in there. But if I switch on the gate, immediately delay's gone. And as I lower the threshold, eventually it's gonna hit a volume for the loudest notes only, and they're gonna trigger the delay, but not the quiet notes. The release knob will decide how long the gate stays open. Maybe if we go really short, we'll just get the edge of it. You'd notice that more if the actual um, piece of audio we were sending to it had a longer note to it. All right, let's look at the ducking option. So for this one, I'm gonna demonstrate it on a vocal. Now if I switch on the echo, it's gonna get a little bit messy if it's just on all the time. What the ducking is gonna let me do is have the echo on only in the gaps. It's gonna pull down the volume of the echo when there's actual signal or music there. Um, and we can have it just in the separate bits, kind of like side chaining in a way. So let's try switching on ducking. As we lower it down, it's got to, the threshold's gotta get down to the volume of whatever the input is, and then it'll start working. Let's see. So now you can hear that when the vocal's playing, it pulls down the volume of the uh, echo so it doesn't get in the way. This is a really nice feature. And we just get a bit of the echo happening in the gaps instead. All right, let's take a look at some of the analog tape emulation options. First one, noise. So this one over here, even if we're just switching it on and turning up the amount, we're gonna get a bunch of noise playing. Now we can have this mixed into our delay happening in the background. Um, a lot of the old analog tape units, they would introduce a certain amount of noise. And in some ways it can be quite desirable. And they have a little bit of hiss and rumble and a little bit of vibe in there. And we can control the, the kind of uh, sound of it with the morph knob too. It'll morph between different types of noise. More like sort of hum in that one. So sort of like different machines. Now you're probably not gonna have it on just full noise all the time, but uh, a little bit can be nice. Let's get that uh, running here, let's hear it in the delay. What you can also do is we could switch on our gate again, and then the noise is only gonna play when the gate's open, so we'll get a bit of noise, but only on those loud notes. Now you're gonna notice that even more too if we had a bit more top end here. Works well with the filters. And lastly, the wobble feature. So the wobble is gonna emulate the uh, kind of inconsistencies and the imperfection of the tape in the analog tape delays. You see that sometimes they speed up a little bit or slow down a little bit and you get these kind of little pitch wobbles in there. And I know we can do a pitch wobble with the modulation, but this is a bit more random. So let's hear what that sounds like. We can also use the morph control to make it sound like different types of randomized pitch wobble. As we increase it, it starts getting a bit more hectic and fast. bit more aggressive. But these kind of things used in a small amount can be quite nice.
What if we came over and tried pulling our vocal in and have that running at the same time? Alright, there's a few reasons why I absolutely love the new Echo plugin in Ableton Live 10 and why we definitely did need one and why it's better than the digital ones. So, if you liked the video today, please hit like below, hit subscribe too, and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever I post another tutorial like this. And actually, if you want more tutorials that go more in depth on this kind of stuff, I've done a free Ableton Echo tutorial with more real world examples of vocal settings, lead settings, drum settings, things like this, and some advanced sound design settings as well too, for things like sound effects and special stuff. Plus, you'll even get a free pack of um, presets that I made. So just head on over to the link just here and you can grab that for free right now. All right, thanks for checking out the video, guys. This is Bass Clef out. 